Radar Show on the Road. Well, once again, traders, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's good to have you all here. Uh, I've got uh, quite a mixture of traders here. We've got a lot of just general members and I've got a lot of our coaching members have decided to come and have a bit more of a punishment. Uh, so we're going to be covering a great deal of information in today's session and uh, I don't know if you just logged in and just heard what I mentioned but we will probably uh, go a good hour and a half I'd say I'm hoping I can finish quicker than that we'll just see how we go and in a moment in a moment I'll show you where the handouts will be and where I'll post the recording hi Mary Jean uh, from the Philippines welcome good day Mark good to have you here my friend Mark I don't know if I said thank you for that email I uh, read the broker but once again and I haven't passed that over to Chuck yet but I will now traders even if you choose not to incorporate some of what I teach today the eight by eight strategy I'm going to be sharing with you a whole lot of other ideas that you can still use uh, on the normal charts but one thing I love about the 8x8 that I'm about to show you is it allows you to go for the home runs and yet if you want to scalp it, it can just basically help pinpoint some of the high probability scalping strategies or, or, or entries and as always this is only one of many many techniques that one can use today trade or swing trade or even scalp for that matter but um, I really think it's got some merit but as always traders I think it's important that you also learn to focus on that one thing that is try not to jump from one strategy to another for an example some of our members and I'll show you the chart when we get to it they prefer to use the ATR rather than the 8x8 but I'll show you both of those as well so as I mentioned there are a lot of handouts that we'll get to and we will cross across and have a look at the charts and see if we can spot some setups as we go along as well I'm just quickly checking my notes here okay what I'll do I'll turn off the camera so you get full screen and here we go uh, so I do need to pull up the disclaimer come on up you come there is a risk in trading don't trade with the rent money unless you're already a very profitable trader uh, if you're watching the recording please feel free to pause the recording to read the disclaimer now a very quick advertisement if you're not already a coaching member you can now join my coaching for only $97 a month uh, so for 97 a month you can join my coaching and you can stay for one month or as many months as you like you just got to give three days notice if you choose not to continue and we've got around uh, it's over 200 members that either attend for live sessions or watch the recordings and so it's only seven month or only 597 a year so you save over 50 percent again on top so it's only you're basically six dollars 25 per session that's the end of the advertisement let's get on with it so the power of questions very important traders is that as I go through this don't ask can I do this instead how can I do do this what's the fastest way of mastering this what's great about this what can I learn from today's webinar unfortunately we live in a world of skeptics today people that are what we call have a fixed mindset have an open mindset traders because I'm going to be sharing some ideas with you that work and kick goals big time but they won't won't work for everyone like anything if you don't do the work on them don't incorporate it's not going to work for you so be asking yourself what can I learn now a lot of some of the things that I cover today is really thanks to Jake Bernstein I want to give the due credit and I, I really can't remember what Jake calls it but basically it's a, um, a, a crossover of simple moving averages using his strategy somewhat in, and incorporating our setups now what I will do because just in case it takes us a while to get to it and if you anyone has to log out if you're a general member on my Google Drive I've opened a folder there called 8x8 Masterclass so what you see I'm in the general members area 8x8 Masterclass all of the handouts that I refer to including the PowerPoint from today I've uploaded there for you likewise the link to join my coaching classes you can go and download the link uh, with that special at $97 a month or $597 a year is in there as well so if you do need to uh, leave early I'll upload the link 
to the recording in this folder later. Now, if you're a coaching member, and I recognize many of you and great to have you here as always, uh, it's I've opened up a folder for you just inside the February uh, coaching class there. So, and for general members there, in every session of coaching, we've got new handouts. And as you can see, we don't get to them all, there's that many, uh, but we cover a huge amount in our coaching sessions. But I've opened up a separate folder there for you with these specific handouts for you, just called the 8x8 Masterclass. So, what basically is the eight open close? It's a very simple strategy. And you can use this strategy for day trading, uh, for swing trading and scalping. Now, this is basically what Jake says. In a bull market, most closes are greater than most opens. And in a bear market, closes are usually uh, lower than opens. So the eight by eight strategy, which Jake calls the eight open close, consists of two moving averages, an eight period, a simple moving average, not an EMA, of the close, okay? So you, you apply one to your charts, and remember all of this is in the PowerPoint and handout. So uh, yes, take notes by all means, but you'll be able to watch the recording and I've got extensive notes on this for you. So an eight period, set to the open. So virtually every trading platform now allows you to adjust it, whether it's be the open, close or high. And you then set up another one set to the low. And basically the instructions here, when the eight goes above the, uh, when the eight close goes above the eight open, you've got a potential buy setup. And when the eight goes below the eight open, you've got a potential sell. And we'll be looking at some of the rules that will help qualify this. Now, Jake's notes, trade very active markets. So in other words, a big part of this concept is to pick up the runners. So not only to be scalping the market, to, to pick up the runners. So to do that, we wanna be following and uh, using an anchor chart, and even two, and we'll look at that in a moment. Now we want markets that trend because if you don't, if you're in a market that say very sideways, a choppy market, you can get chopped up with this concept as with most trading strategies. So to stay in a trend until you have a cross of the moving averages. Now I'm gonna show you uh, various options. You can work on the eight by eight on your entry chart or on the anchor chart. If you use the anchor chart, you'll get much larger runners, but at the same time, you're gonna get much wider swings, which for shorter term traders can really be a little frightening at, one, <laughs> uh, at times. Uh, and consider only trading the eight by eight entries in the direction of the higher time frames. Now, when we go to the charts and look at my charts, you'll see that uh, I've got one of mine as dots rather than lines. So this is actually one of Jake's uh, slides here. So what we're looking for is these crossovers and capturing these moves. Now, we can do this with many different indicators. We can use our ATR, we can use a parabolic SAR stop and reverse to do a similar thing. So this is one strategy, but it's, it's nice, it works really well. And when you tend to see, we call this the pinching. When you see a pinching of these simple moving averages, quite often it will identify a change in market direction when we see that pinching. So there's a couple of slides there and you can see here, you could stay in and ride this all the way down until the low down here. Now, as I mentioned, you can use this for any type of trading, whether you're scalping and of course scalping where you can be in and out taking small profits. And if you're trading multiple contracts, it's always great to get the cash register to ring. That is to uh, scalp something off, maybe pick up your four to six ticks and to go for the runner. You may choose to day trade and when you're using your anchor chart, a lot of it is no longer a scalping uh, type trade, you will be day trading. Then of course, you can use the exact same concept if you're swing trading or position trading. You're just doing it on different time frames. Now in today's webinar, we're going to be really focused on scalping and 
day trading. So what is scalping? In short, scalping is the idea of taking quick trades, typically on smaller time frames. Now, when we go to the charts, I'm going to be showing you one tick charts on the currency futures, on the ES and CL. And then I'll give you some suggestions or ideas for um, uh, how we increase those time frames. So I'll be, uh, if you want to do some longer term trading. So we will look at that. Now the concept, which markets is it suitable for? Whether you trade the ES or the micros, the NQ, YMCL, or, you know, the black gold, um, the currency futures or even FX, it really doesn't matter. But what we do want is we want a trending market. That's sort of really important for us. Now, right now, we've got a setup that's just fired off. And let me just show you this. And we do this in coaching. We tend to go off to the live trades and just show you this. So right now, we have got a setup right there. Uh, setup, let's have a look here. Look, actually, you might, it might have been a little too quick. That's two minutes after we had a, what we call a rule of one. Now, what I want you to notice is this chart here is what we call the anchor chart one and down below here you see these dots okay so this is the open down here and when we've got the close above now note how the blue line and I know it's a little hard to see on the screen but the blue line is above the white dots now I prefer dots on this one but you could have it as a solid line and I'll once again we'll, we'll I've got some more handouts on this for you on setting up the indicators. Now, if I look down here, let me just cross over to there. We actually had the crossover. See these dots here? Uh, I've actually got an indicator. I've had this coded for uh, the trade station users. And Ali, uh, one of our members was kind enough to show, and I've got a handout there for you, how to set it up on Ninja Trader. And all it is is just the crossovers. But the whole concept, well, not the whole concept, but a big part of it is to enter early, and a little hard here because the market closed, it's just reopened the Globex session, but to ride and ride these large moves. Now, if you're like myself, where I like to get in and out and scalp the market, maybe go for a larger run on the second, a lot of contracts, okay, you can enter using either uh, the T2s, the short-term stochastic hooks, or the ruler ones, etc. Now, on the Aussie dollar, which we'll probably swap to come backwards and forwards to it as I see setups, this is $5 a tick. So each one of these Renko candles, I call them candles for, I know they're bricks, but I call them candles, uh, is good for $5. Now, realistically traders, just four, six tick trades a day. Four a day will give you 100 a day per contract. Or if you want to use it, go for a lower target, five five tick trades a day. And I'm going to be showing you which are the best to go for. For an example, if you want to go for a pretty much a good 85% home run, when on your anchor chart, you've got a 21B or a 34B like we've got here, they nearly always will lead to a larger move. So we're going to be discussing that. Now, as we're breaking the pivot here, what we can see just above, we do have the 200 EMA. For 200 EMA on your charts, and of course we may get a pivot bounce, but the 200 EMA on your charts act as price magnets and key support resistance levels. So we'll come back to this, but just there you had a rule of one, that would have been too quick. You would have, you know, that's sort of two and a half minutes, maybe you might have jumped in there. I usually say to traders to wait a couple of minutes, maybe three to five minutes after the market opens, but it's just a good example. Notice here how our blue line's above the white. So that's great, we've got obviously an uptrend. So in other words, the trend bias on our anchor chart one is to the long side and also on the anchor chart two. Now, if you find the concept of having three charts, 
A uh, little confusing if uh, you're a newer trader or even if you're an experienced trader, you'll find with the 8x8, you can really quite comfortably get away with just uh, having your entry chart and the anchor chart. Now, if this proceeds um, up further, I usually expect a bounce off there. So we'll come back to that. So we'll continue with the PowerPoint for now. So in other words, virtually any market, gold, you can scalp the market or use this concept on it, uh, use an eight by eight on it. Now, very quickly, um, we discovered this, we spoke about this in our coaching class yesterday, uh, Marty Swartz, Pitbull, he's a scalper. Now, as he says here, he needs to be right seven or eight times out of 10. Most of his trades, he's in and out in five minutes or less. Okay, some of his longer term trades. And of course, Swartz makes hundreds of thousands a month as a scalper. Well, mind you, I will say now, he's mainly moved over to options trading. Okay, but the point is, he's a scalper. The guys over at SMB Capital, where they're constantly, they're 80 to 90% profitable on days in, day out. Some of their guys are 90, 95% profitable each day. Now, what gives them that high degree of success? Well, three things. They develop a skill set over time that allows them in their case to get out of stocks. So remember, what I'm showing you here, you can apply to stocks, Forex or futures. It really doesn't matter. They develop pattern recognition skills sorry, just fix that, that enable them to accurately assess their risk versus reward. There are patterns that appear, and of course they're in the right, mar the right markets. We need those trending markets. Now, one thing that I love about the futures and Forex markets, of course, you don't have to trade a basket full of um, stocks. Yes, Steve, um, it is, a, no worries, it is being recorded, my friend, and it'll be posted the link in the folder I just showed. So what are the best charts for scalping and day trading? Look, I've now got a real bias for the short-term scalping and it's this, it's the Renko. And the reason being, and you can do the same thing with range, but I love the buy sell stops uh, with the short-term trading. If you're saying more day trading, it's not so important, but say if you're trading a, uh, yes it will be Steve, it's in the Feb folder, mate. So if you're trading the uh, one tick, it can take off like a rocket. So I'm gonna show you how to really be ahead of the market in putting your uh, trade in advance. So that once we start to get a retracement or a pullback, uh, we can be ready. Because what I'm showing you here today, 99% of the time, it is trend following. And of course, that's a key thing here. What gives us the, the casino, the, the house edge in what we're doing? We're really covering here a trend following strategy. It's very high probability. Now, I'm gonna be talking to you about steps. And so this is what I mean by a step with Renko. These are what we call offset. And once again, uh, I cover this in other videos in the members area and in your mel well, welcome email when you first joined. But of course, in coaching, we cover this extensively every week. So here, this is actually, in this case, this is actually a micro ES. For the micro ES, it's one point is four ticks. And where I talk about steps, each step is worth $2.50 or two ticks. So if we were on the big contract, that would be uh, $25. Likewise, if we're scalping the one tick Renko, no matter which mark, so if it's on the ES, each step would be $12.50, but that's what I mean by steps. So when I get to the charts and I talk about steps, that's exactly what I mean. Now, I mentioned to you that Renko charts are fantastic for scalping because they're easy to calculate, easily where to put in a buy or a sell stop. That's important in a fast moving market. Uh, Joel, um, what I'll do, I'll leave, I'll leave questions to later, otherwise I tend to get, um, now I don't have a three line break in the Heikinashi, by the way, <laughs> uh, what that was, and I think it says full stop. Okay, so Heiken Ashi charts, of course, you can trade or three line breaks. So that's, they're not one the same. Okay, so they're actually quite different. Um, so 
Renko charts, of course, you can apply the exact same thing to tick or to time-based charts or volume or even high Kanashi, but just with the very short term, for me, no worries, Joel, I prefer the Renko. However, as I will show you in a moment, I still have a tick chart up because one of the challenges with Renko, they can, they're beautiful for smoothing out price action, but sometimes we can lose some valuable information as well. So this handout is uploaded for you and so is the PowerPoint here. When I set a limit order or in this particular case actually um, a buy stop or a sell stop, um, I'll show you we're going to count from the low of a previous brick and I'll show you this. So if I'm using a one tick Renko and it's a rule of one for anyone that doesn't remember or a newer member you'll see in a moment what a rule of one is. We count three ticks from a previous bar and I'll show you exactly what that is shortly. Likewise, if you've got a super scalper, you're gonna have a slightly different count because you're gonna put a buy stop in, say uh, four ticks from the low of a certain candle and I'll show you that. So if you're using a two tick or a four tick, the count is going to be different. I will show you that on the charts when we get to it. Now, one of the benefits is that the smaller the time frame we trade, the smaller the stop. And that's one thing I love about a very low time frame is that say if you're trading the one tick, and, and let me say this, at times, well, and quite often, the one tick is not tradable because it's far too fast then we'll have to go to a two tick and even a two tick at times. However, at times they are, particularly during the Globex session and right now uh, on the Aussie dollar. And the Aussie dollar, if you put your order in the way I'll show you how to do it, you can usually get on top of it in, in really probably 95% of the time. Now, if you do get out, of course, you can always re-enter and I'll show you where those re-enters, where you re-enter and once again, as I mentioned, traders, if scalping's too fast, apply what I'm teaching you here today. That's why I've got here a two tick or a four tick. You can apply the same concept to any time frame. So a buy stop is where you're putting a pending order ahead of the market. So say if I have a retracement happening, the market's pulling back, I will put then a buy stop uh, that is, if I've got an uptrend, I'm getting a retracement, I'll then put a buy stop ahead of the market. And there's a way we do that using that tick count. So that basically we are paying one tick, perhaps um, uh, say above a limit order, but and once again, it's also better than say using a market order because the challenge you can have when you're scalping, uh, it can really take off. That is, you can get in quite comfortably usually on the buy stop, but then as the size of the uh, move, like once you start to go from a one tick to a two tick, more and more traders are jumping on board. And so, and when you go from a two to a four generally, you've got even more traders jumping on board because they're trading higher time frames. You'll actually see the market really move. And so it's important that we get that, that stop put in. Not so important with the higher time frame. Now once again, um, uh, I'm, oh good hey London, <laughs> excellent. Um, so I'm going to throw a lot of ideas at you, at, at you here and like, like I say always, you go back and you apply this over 100 trades, not live trades, but over 100 sim trades. So because we've got such a wide variety, we've got over 120 people here now, uh, so I'm giving you a whole lot of different concepts here, all using the same strategy. So if you are scalping, here's something else to consider. If you use a rule of one, uh, it means you're going to get in a lot earlier than say a T1. But, but likewise, uh, on a very low time frame, the market can take off very quickly. And so you could have a much tighter stop and once again when we go to the charts we'll look at that usually I'll put my stop one tick below a swing low 
or the swing high where I've got my entry. Now, what you can do quite often, and let, actually, let me just show you this right now, because, so if we look at this rule of one, just there, that potential entry. Now see that, by the way, remember I mentioned to you the 200, we'll probably go up there and get that resistance. There it is right now. When it comes to, um, and just on that point, when it comes to your 89 and your 200 EMAs, particularly the 200 on uh, any chart really, and even on your entry charts, they are price magnets and they offer a lot of support resistance. Now, if I go and enter, uh, so if I entered that one and I had another entry just here or just here, on the hook and I'll explain those in more detail shortly. I could either have my stop tucked one tick below. So in other words, if I'm using a buy stop, as soon as I start to see that retracement back, see that red candle? On the first candle come back, the first red candle, I've got a fully qualified trade. So I want to get in and scalp this. I count up two ticks from the low, one, two, and I then place a buy stop on my DOM. Okay, so if I go to the DOM here, and say if I was going to place a buy stop, I would put a buy stop two ticks above where price is right now, okay, if I wanted to go long. Likewise, if I was going to sell short here, now right there now, I would not want to go short if I'm using that is a counter trend move. I would not want to go short for two ticks. Why? If I'm using a sell stop and I rely on the super scalper, I need to have three lower closes just for the super scalper to qualify as a super scalper. So therefore, I need to put a sell stop in one tick below. So 70 would be where I'd put my sell stop. Okay, so I'd have a, a sell stop there at uh, 70. Let me just put that there. So right now, I've got a sell stop for 10 contracts at 70, which is one tick below. Because if this takes off, and if it was fully qualified, and there is some big maybes on this one, by the way, um, and we'll get to that when we get to the three charts, uh, and it doesn't matter how fast it, it takes off, at least I'm gonna be stopped in. Now, most sell stops turn into, turn into market orders, okay? So it doesn't mean you're going to get a perfect fill, but at least you are going to get a fill. 95% of the time, you'll get your price. Now, likewise, this little move just here. Now, as that come down, I would sort of put a buy stop in two ticks above. So that would give me a buy stop up here. I now get a lower close, so what I do is drag down my order by one tick, okay? So then when it does take off, which quite often on these one tick charts, it'll take off very quickly, you get stopped into that trade very quickly. And so it guarantees your fill. Now, just while we are here, I may as well just explain this here. We've got, there's actually um, uh, two different types of trades we've got right here. Let's start with this one. This is our classic slingshot trade. We can see there that the long-term stochastic is overbought. The short-term has come down and kicked up. Okay, so then we actually get an entry on the close. Now, for that, I must have the hook. Okay, I've got to have that hook there, that's very, very important. Now on Renko, and this is exclusive for Renko, we also have a concept of what we call um, a rule of one. Now a rule of one, and only for Renko charts, is after retracement and the first candle that closes uh, back in a direction, I know they're bricks, I just, <laughs> all right, brick, candle, whatever you wanna call it, uh, the first one that closes back in a direction uh, you can enter the market. Now, for that though, what can actually happen, of course, the market can keep falling. You may, if you're a pure price action trader, you might be happy to enter on a rule of one. Now, a rule of one, as I mentioned, is a trend following. So if we explore this trend, there's the concept that we work on, we call it a 
um, are a, a fanning of the EMAs. Now, for any market, let's look at this here on this chart. Do we have a fanning of the EMAs? We can see here that the eight is above the 21. The 21, which is my brown line here, is above the 34. The 34 is above the 89. The 89 is above the 200. So that's what we call a fanning of the EMAs. Now, one thing I want to look at, is this just a short term counter trend move or does the anchor chart trend bias also support any long trades? Well, we can see here looking at this, well, same thing starting to happen. We're starting at a potential turn in the market. Now, when we take these trades and we see the 200 EMA above, we're always thinking, okay, are, is price action going to be stopped at this point? Okay, and we usually see a bounce at least once. So we usually go up and test it once. Yes, this trend could continue to the short side. In fact, let's just have a look at the higher time frame. One of the things we always want to do is just look at the trend bias of the day on a much higher time frame. We will talk about time frames that we use very shortly. Okay, so we always just want to check that. So we've got a potential breakout here. Now, if we look at this here, you've got a tiny little bit of divergence there. You've got a little bit here right now and you've got none at the moment on the anchor chart. Normally, I would have about that much showing on the anchor chart chart, okay? But we've got virtually no divergence. So we'll see what happens here. But this is, at least in the short term, ideal trading conditions. So you had an entry with a rule of one there and you had one there and even right there, you had a T2, a short-term stochastic hook. Now, many of you are aware that on, and, and remember, each one of these is $5. So one, two, three, four. So we've touched five. Now, by now, we would have been filled. Okay, so we see how we're going up there and continually touching it. Now, for new traders, in doing your own testing, uh, please always remember for accurate statistics, you want to see the candle tick through by one tick just because, and I know most of you know this, just because you go up there and touch it doesn't mean you've been filled. Okay, so in doing any testing right, right now, let's pop through. So here using the rule of one, you had one, say if you used a buy stop, one, two, three, you easily had five ticks. Now, this is important because what you've got to do traders, it's so important that you've got to have a goal, a target. It needs to be realistic, it needs to be believable for yourself, but you've got to have a target. Now, in trading, say, the Australian dollar, uh, and this is in today's fold of a little spreadsheet, um, just say for an example, if you chose to start trading the Aussie dollar with, say, $2,500, Okay, and you average $100 a day. Each time you double your money, you start trading a second contract. Within 19 weeks, you're trading 23 contracts and you're up to $10,000 a week income. Now, what if you only had, say, $2,000? Okay, and we'll talk about why you want around $2,000 a moment and you are making an average of $75 a day. Okay, so your contract value and What's important is our risk parameters, which I'll explain, 75 a day, you can be up to that income level within 22 weeks. Now, we never, ever, ever risk any more than 2%. So what that means is, trade, is that, say if your average stop when you're scalping, say on the Australian dollar, and so if we look at this for a moment, go back to this, the average stop, and let's use a more, uh, let's say we use the super scalper. Now the super scalper traders, okay, means that that does not, that's not confirmed until you get that third higher candle close. One, two, three. The stop therefore would be one, two, three, four, five ticks. However, if you're using a buy stop, and this is all in the documents there, you would have a six tick stop. Let's look at this one as a little perhaps easier to see. 
So if one of my rules was, uh, and this works brilliantly, as you'll see when we go to the uh, ES, if one of the rules was I want it on the one tick, I want to have uh, and only enter when I've got a super scalper entry. Why would I do that? Well, you've got three high closes. It can just prove up that you've got some momentum. Now for that, as soon as I had that uh, retracement, I would count from the low of the last candle four ticks. One, two, three, four. And that's where my buy stop would be in. In putting in a buy stop at that level, it then means traders that I would have a total stop loss of one, two, three, four, five, and if my stop was one tick under there, that is six ticks. Now, on the Australian dollar, and as I was explaining to my coaching members last month, the great thing is in November, last November, they dropped the tick value on the Aussie dollar down from on the futures contracts, this is, the currency futures, from $10 down to only $5. So what that means is, your total stop loss, six ticks, your total is only $30. If you stay within your 2% rules, what does that mean you need per contract? Only $1,500. Now, realistically though, you always want to have that buffer and also if you have a few losing trades is what they call a maintenance margin, which you've got to always maintain if you have it, but at least you can start trading it. Now they do have day trading rates of course and on most currency futures it's about 50% of what the broker requires and I'll show you what that is on a little slide in a moment. However, you must have traders always allow that buffer, right? You want to have that buffer and that's why I say in the spreadsheet really you want to be allowing around 2,000 if you trade the dollar, but you can see the potential there. Now, we also talk a lot about is rather than thinking just in dollar amounts, what if you're thinking, and, and Raymond, who actually is here in class today, he actually created a great little spreadsheet if you want to really rather than think dollars, but think ticks, okay? so. This has been uploaded for you as well. So let's just say here that um, uh, you're going to, uh, oh Mary, you want me to, okay, I'll, I'll go back to that in a moment. Oh, when we get to the charts, I'll be covering that extensively. Uh, Mary was just asking, Mary Jean, to, about the low of the last candle. So I'll get back to that. And if I don't, if I forget it, please post the note again. So let's just say for an example, um, and thanks to Raymond once again for this, but the tick value on the market you're trading, you put your tick value in. So if your commission, let's just say your commission is $5, and let's just say here, in this particular case, your stop is six ticks. And let's just say here that your target, and let's be conservative, is only five ticks. You're scalping. Now, uh, let's just say then that you've got an 80% uh, win uh, ratio and your daily goal is $100 a day. So that means I need to fire off uh, uh, 11 trades for that 80%. So on average, I need 11 trades per day, which you romping on that dollar, uh, on, the, on the Aussie dollar. But on the other hand, if you're then going for a larger target, such as, and I'll show you how to do this, get the larger targets of say eight ticks or even 10, you only need five trades a day. And even 10 ticks, and I'll show you how to do that, you only need three trades a day. Now, just very quickly, how do we do that? How do we go for those larger targets? There's a, there's a hand out there, and I'll just bring it up right now for you. Because how we go for the larger targets is of course using the eight by eight. But on top of that, if you choose to, you hit your target, you want to re-enter and you see, great, I've got eight by eight support. And even if I don't have the eight by eight, but I've got a 21B on the anchor chart one or two. Because as you will see, when you've got a golden setup on the higher time frames, they're, the great, they're a great time to then go for the runners. Likewise, 
See where I say a T12. For newer members in the room, what is a T12? A T12 is very simply where we have a bounce off a major EMA on a higher time frame. See that there? That's what we call a T12. When we have these, quite often a lot of these will give us, not always, and it helps if you've got divergence, but they can be great for giving you some really good moves on your entry chart. So for larger moves, uh, this handout's there. Are you trading in the direction? So this is uh, uh, on your entry chart. We use the entry chart, the EC for our trade entries. Am I trading in the direction of a trend on the anchor charts? Do I then have a 21B, a 34B, an 89, or even a 2B, that is where I've got two bounces? Yes, Go consider then going for a much larger move on your entry chart. So both the um, setting up uh, there, you just put your tick value in, there's an explanation there, and there's also a little PDF there from uh, Raymond just on his philosophy behind that, and it's a great one, it's really good. Okay, so have a look at that. So, moving on. So with scalps, so you can actually have a tighter stop loss on the very low time frames. Now, I think once you start to get and you're starting to day trade, I think that's where we want to go for perhaps, I like to see my stop under a swing low, under a swing high. But when you're on the one tick, because you tend to get these big rapid moves, uh, you can generally have a tighter stop. Okay, so let's talk about something that's very, very important, why this works so well and why our general strategies work. Well, the day traders fast track program strategies. It's because we're taking trades in the direction of a higher time frame. So we're like surfers waiting for that perfect wave. The perfect wave is when we have the lower and higher time frames both confirming our trade. Now, this is an excellent book. Coaching members have this. Uh, Robert Miner's book, High Probability Trading Strategies. And, and lots of uh, authors and traders have spoken about this. And so the dark blue line represents our anchor chart. And so what we're looking at doing is waiting for those retracements, pullbacks, and then taking the trend continuation trades. What the eight by eight will do, it'll help you psychologically if you're going to start following those, pick up the runners by, when you get these little wriggles, if you don't have the crossover, staying with the trade. Now, as I mentioned at the start of today's webinar, there's other things you can use for that. We can use our, our ATR, which we have for Ninja Trader 8, which works brilliantly, um, and uh, for TradeStation, or of course we can use the parabolic. There's our SAR, Stop and Reverse by Wells Wilder. There's a, a lot of different things that will keep us in there. But what the runners do, traders, they cover our losses. And um, uh, on, say, the, the, the good trending markets, such as the dollars, um, even the ES, but the uh, gold and CL, you can get your home run in one move very, very quickly. Okay, so the concept is so simple. Find trade setups that are in harmony with the trend of multiple time frames, or even one time frame. So trade in the direction of the larger time frame momentum, execute the trade following the smaller time frame momentum reversals in the direction. So we get that pullback and away we go. That's why as soon as we start to see that pullback on the very low time frames, it's very important, you can put your buy stop or sell stop in. A couple of other things that are very important for me is that in identifying a trend, as a reminder for the new members in the room, or those that are not familiar with our setups as yet, is that a T20 is very simply where we see the uh, 8 EMA crossing through the 34 EMA. Now, that almost every time will coincide within one candle or brick of a, what we call a 50 CCI zero line crossover. And many traders around the world will use a 50 CCI. If you're above the zero line, 
you're looking for longs. If you're below, you're looking for shorts. Now, so have I had a T20? Yes, just down here. Good, okay, so it means then I've got a long bias at least on the entry chart. Have I had a T20-1? That's very simple. A T20-1 is simply the first trade, the first retracement trade after this. Uh, I love it when they're 34 Bs, very high probability trade when they're 34 Bs, okay? Now, I have to do this because this is how, how we learn. Now, what did I say about the T12s? Okay, now remember, right at the start I said, we're looking at that 200. And remember on that list where I said, uh, where is it, the um, how to achieve larger moves? The setups to focus on are the T12s. Okay, and you've got one, there was your T12, you're bouncing off the higher time frame and look at our move there. Now, where do I expect this to bounce? Because remember, as traders, we're anticipating, and there's a couple of th um, key things. Where's my entry? Where's my um, uh, stop go? And where's my exit? Now, if you're going for a runner, uh, there are certain things, of course, you wanna make sure it's a high probability runner. Now, in this case, uh, I'm expecting a bounce at the magnet on the 200 again. So generally speaking, I'd expect just at least one bounce on the 200 and potentially on the 89, just there. Now, where um, uh, Mary Jean asked about the entry, so if I just look at this here, even the high, when I'm taking a counter trend move, which this is, okay, so that's the trend on the short term, I wanna see three lower closes. See this one here? See how the paint bar plotted, but then it reversed? That's a no-no, that's not what I want. I wanna see the three lower closes. In fact, my sell stop would have been one tick below. Your sell stop there would have been at that level. So there you're stopped in, you've got a six tick stop. One, two, three, four, five, and one tick above, which is $30. Now, there's one other thing that you can do, and I've got some slides for you for some added insurance. Now, some added insurance is that what you can actually do is wait for the first candle to close on your anchor chart. And we'll get to this on in the PowerPoint. I've got some examples for you on this. Whenever you have a really deep pullback, what you can do, traders, is that because this is such a low time frame, what you can actually do is wait for your first candle to close. Now, what that means is, rather than counting four ticks down from there, one, two, three, four, there's your sell stop, you count seven ticks down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can see there, and there it is there, that it gets you in later. However, at times that can be good, okay? Because it gives you a confirmation of the move, okay? Now, even if you got there, um, uh, okay, it's gonna increase, you'll stop generally by around three ticks. So instead of having a six tick stop, you're going to have a nine tick stop. Now, right here now, we can see here we've hit the 200 and we've got a slight 200 EMA overshoot, okay? But I'll be very surprised if we don't get a bounce. Now, when we start to get these EMA overshoots, we call them a 200 EMA overshoot. See the support that the 200 generally gives you? Okay, so usually, even if you get an overshoot, you'll usually get a bit of a bounce, okay? Uh, not forgetting, of course, that we are in a downtrend, okay? So see this here? So this is from uh, the, uh, the session this morning all the way down. Okay, now, and this is where the eight by eight comes in. And let me mention this now too. We can see up there how the eight by eight crossed. See up there? Now, see how the eight 
is still, we haven't crossed again. Okay, now that's what we call a pinching. See down here, we, we pinched and it changed direction there. It pinched, see how it's basically gone horizontal? Now, look at this on your anchor chart. See that yellow dot and see how it's crossed over just there? This is where if you're going to go for your home runs, you've entered this based upon your T12. And in the meantime, you've now got that crossover. So we've entered up here. And normally, normally speaking, being a T12, you'd actually enter using your sell stop just there. You're still in this move, okay? Why? Because see on your anchor chart there that we've got the crossover and you stay in it. Now there's two methods for your exits you can use here. Well, actually there's a lot, hell of a lot more and I've got a slide in a moment for that. Number one, you can wait for this to cross over, okay? If you, let's just talk eight by eight to begin with. You can use the crossover on your entry or you can use the crossover on the, uh, which will give you these big home runs here on the anchor chart. Now what you might do, so if you're trading 10 contracts, take five off at maybe five to six ticks, scalp the market and trail the rest. Okay, trial the rest. Now, just one thing before we go back to the slide, this is a really good little lesson here. Um, we're gonna look at a slide in a moment where I talk about the 80% trades. And um, uh, the 80% trades, uh, just something from a guy called Dick Diamond, one of our members provided me with an e-book. And it's a great little book. Well, it's not a little book, it's a 100 page book or so. Uh, just a little question that he posed in that, is it an 80% trade or not? If it's not an 80% trade or a very high percentage trade, it means no trade. Now, what exactly are the 80% trades? And here's that bounce I expected. The 80% trades are trend following fully qualified 34 Bs and two Bs. Okay, so they're really the 80% the trades. And actually, I've got a, once again, I've got a handout on that, which we'll get to. So uh, we will, we'll come back to this, but here is that bounce that we've got. Now, you would be thinking of exiting right now if you're using this, uh, the eight by eight here. If you're gonna be using the eight by eight on the anchor chart, you'd still be in the trade. So back to the PowerPoint. Okay, are the 8, 21 and 34 EMAs trending in the same direction as the 89 and 200? Ideally, you wanna see all of these above the 200. When you start to see the 200 EMAs heading sideways, that's where we wanna be extremely cautious of the trade. Uh, the other thing is, do I have angulation? What exactly is angulation? Angulation is where we see price action trending well and truly away from our EMAs. When we have angulation, that will usually lead to a good counter trend trade. Look at this example again. See this here. This is what we call traders angulation. See how price was rapidly angling away from your EMAs. Be very careful where you get this situation, where all your EMAs, price is going up, but you don't have any real angulation. Okay, so here on our entry chart, and this is our trading chart, this is great. We wanna see that angulation. Be very cautious in ever taking counter trend trades where you don't have angulation. Okay, that's what I mean by that. All right. Here we've, um, uh, this really gets back to the 80% trade, is it? I focus on one trade. Now, typically this is one of the greatest challenges that traders have is um, thinking, okay, to hit my profit target, I need to be executing eight to 10, if I'm scalping, maybe 20 trades a day. And that can sound and feel overwhelming. It's so important that you focus on the process, focus on that one trade. I recommend traders, and this is uploaded as a Word document, 
uh, that you print this out. Forget the rest of the trades for the day. Just focus on that one trade. The other thing then is, if you're um, a newer trader, is it an 80% trade? No equals no trade. Um, for an example, counter trend trading uh, is something that newer traders should not even consider. It's so important traders that you avoid counter trend trading initially because there's some, they can look great, and but unfortunately so many traders want to pick tops and bottoms. And the big thing with the concept we were talking about here, the eight by eight, it is really a trend following strategy. Now, when it comes to exit strategies, there's a lot of them. The one that we're really focused on today, of course, is looking at is the eight by eight. Now, if you're trading one contract, generally speaking, I would say to uh, a trader to have what we call a fixed target. You want to hear the cash register ring. It's also a confidence booster. Okay, uh, we've got to be very careful of the eight by eight concept and many trading concepts is when you hit chop. Because if you're stopping and, uh, and reversing, stop and reversing, every time you get a crossover of those moving averages, you'll lose money big time. And that's why it's also very hard to back test uh, the eight by eight and a lot of concepts because you only really want to be in a trending market. Now, how do we know when we've got a trending market? When we get the fanning of the EMAs. When I've got the eight by eight support on the anchor chart. So the eight by eight simple uh, moving average crossover is one of the various techniques that you can actually use. Now, markets, let's just talk about if you're a newer trader and uh, maybe funds are tight, and even if they're not tight, but um, you really want to start with a small account and build. And as I showed you with the spreadsheet, you can make a lot of money starting with a small account. And do you know what, what it also does, traders? It builds discipline, it builds self-trust. And we were talking about this in our coaching session yesterday, that one of the great challenges for traders, for many traders, is the psychological damage it's been caused by blowing their account two or three or four times. Don't underestimate what that does to you as a trader. Uh, it then causes you to hesitate, um, to you know, miss trades for all the wrong reasons. And so to retrain yourself, one of the ways of really getting it right is to start with a small account. Likewise, say if you, as many of my traders here, have 50, 100, half a million dollars for trading, is to start off by trading maybe only with $2,000 or um, uh, you know, 3,000 or 5,000 maybe, and earn the right to start trading with more money. In other words, double your account, then add another one. I promise you, if you take that sort of approach, it'll make a massive difference. So what works really well with the 8x8? What trends well? Well, the MES does, the NQ, and you can see here, these are actually the trade station margin requirements. Now, right now, we're actually in what we call the globe session. Now, during the day, New York hours, most brokers offer day trading margins. So I know that some of you are saying, well, hang on, but I don't need 1760 because my broker says uh, I only need $500. Don't be caught out with that. What's your risk? If you're, say, trading a four-point or a 16-tick Renko on, say, the Micro NQ, and you're using a, a T1 for your entry, your risk is $25 per trade on the Micro. If you were trading that on the big contract, it'd be $250. Go and apply your 2% rule, okay, and a little bit of a buffer. Okay, so it's so important that you don't trade while you're undercapitalized, as so many traders do. But you've got lots of options. As I pointed out, I love the Aussie dollar with this. If you start to get up there with, say, uh, CL is also great, and we're going to have a quick look at that, and so is the ES, the big contract. Uh, what you've got to watch is with the when you're scalping on, say, the smaller contracts, 
your commissions, even though they sound small, say 90 cents or a dollar, round turn in proportion of a bigger contract, okay, you're paying a higher percentage. Okay, so you've just got to be aware of that. You'll need a, a larger account to do that. Uh, the big thing is volume. The market that you choose, you've got to have the volume there. And of course, with um, the bond and um, uh, the Aussie dollar, even though like today, it was only traded, uh, where is it there, uh, 85,000 contracts. Uh, once again, it trends beautifully, okay? There's some beautiful trends there. As the, you know, on the ES, and we'll have a look at that in a moment as well. Okay, I've already mentioned here, there's, there's a lot of markets. You can trade the Forex, the futures contracts, the futures Forex, uh, the currency markets. What I love about the currency futures, of course, they're, um, they're um, set up by their CME. You're paying generally less than $5 a contract round turn, and there's no dealing desk. It's hard to get a good broker, uh, Forex broker, that supports scalping. And you go and pay, say, on a big contract, one and a half um, pips, uh, say, on the euro, that's $15 round turn. It gets can, it can get expensive. Now, a little thing here is here are some settings. And let's talk about the chart settings that I like. The scalping settings for the 8x8 are different to what I'd normally trade. So on the Aussie dollar, you can apply this to the... Um, uh, uh, the 6C to, to the uh, US, sorry, to the Euro dollar, uh, to the Aussie dollar, to the pound. Uh, I want one tick. So on the currency futures, it's 0 0.00005. Now, my anchor chart, I want to have four times higher. Okay, I want to have my anchor chart four times higher. Oh, great. Thanks, Robert. Robert just said Pepperstone's a good broker for Forex spread. Uh, great. Okay. But uh, there where they've got a zero spread, but there would be a commission, is it? They've got to be making money somewhere. Um, so are they charging you a fixed fee? Great. Thank you. Okay. So $7 round turn. Great. Thanks, Robert. So Pepperstone, $7. Well, that's that's. Interesting, I wasn't aware of that one, thank you. So this is where we vary uh, on the anchor chart. What I wanna have is uh, my anchor chart four times higher, the anchor chart one, a time frame four times higher. Okay, that's what I want. So therefore that would be uh, two, so four times higher and offset by half that. So that step that you see is that offset. For the anchor chart two, if you're going to use that, I want to have double the anchor chart one. Okay, so one, that's four times higher and that's basically double. Now, it's not an exact science traders. What I'm just looking for is to have my anchor chart one much higher, without excessively high, okay, for you know looking for those swings and then trading back in a direction of that particular time frame. Now, if you're using tick charts, and I mentioned I still like to have a tick chart to look at. Uh, uh, Robert just said that's per lot. Yeah, a lot less if you trade a mini or a micro. Yes, thanks, Robert. Uh, so on the EC, on, on the entry chart, a 55 tick. Now, this is on the currency futures, okay? Um, on the, um, uh, the ES, you'd have to have at least a 144 during New York or maybe even higher. But on, in the end, the time frames that you set up and use have got to be what I call tradable. Okay, uh, if they're not tradable, the time frame's too low. But there's a suggestion there on the currency futures for the tick charts and the time frames. Okay, now another way of look, which I pretty much already mentioned this, and thanks to Raymond with that spreadsheet, who was kind enough to provide the coaching members, uh, and now everyone else here, is to consider their and if you have a psychological challenge just there on trading the dollars, trade ticks. You're after 20 tick ticks net a day. Now you might only after 10, by the way. What's your target? Might be 15. It might be for the young guns in the room. Okay, I know some of you will be going for 200 a day. That's 40 ticks a day. 
Now, because on the euro dollar and uh, on the pound and some other markets, 6.25 a tick, you need less ticks, okay, per day. So the big thing is, how do we achieve these? Okay, so we're going to be looking at the charts now and looking at how we get this. So back to a couple of things. This is something I'll show you on the chart. If you have a counter trend T1, you must wait for a with trend T1 to reconfirm the move. And I'll show you this. You don't have to do this, but as I'll show you this, it's a little bit of insurance, okay? Um, uh, the runners cover the stops. Remember the concept with what Jake has really said with the, uh, is the eight cross eight is really is to go for the larger moves, okay? Uh, the runners are really about covering the stops and making the big bucks. The anchor chart is four times higher. Uh, uh, that is, we use the, oh, and this is really important. Now, what I've done on it, and this works really well, is rather than have an eight by eight on the anchor chart one, so it turns a little bit earlier, okay, consider having an open of seven and a close of eight. It will, uh, on average, virtually every time, it'll give you a tighter turn. So if you're using the lower time frame, or say the one tick, and you want to be following the direction of the anchor chart, uh, that'll just give you a, a tighter turn, and it tends to work really well on that. So, this is all in the slideshow. So this is um, uh, which you've got. So here I've got it just as lines. So very simple. I've got one eight simple moving average set to the close and one set to the open. And in general principle, when the eight close EMA goes above the eight open, you've got a buy setup. When it goes below, you've got to sell. Stay in the trade until you have a cross of EMAs, which will guarantee you'll pick up the runners, such as this right here. You had a short right there. Now normally we look at that and that's almost a T10 type short. And you could have stayed in all the way till we get the pinching right down. Now there's going to be a times where you decide to get out anyway. So what do we normally say at the 200? Nearly always we're going to bounce at the 200. So you may choose to rather than wait and give any back to actually exit and to even trail as you come down. But you can see here you had an entry here and you could have ridden that all the way up. As you're going up right up to the high here and you see you're getting more and more divergence, rather than wait for that, you'd actually be out on four lower closes. You may choose to get out on two lower closes. Now, let's have a look at the dollar, what's happening here, because this is important right now. Remember earlier I said, um, if you're going to stay in, these larger moves, you've got to get used to this. See that there? So we can see we come down, we had 200 bounce, we then rallied up and we then had our pivot bounce right there, okay? Now note here on the anchor chart one, we've still stayed, technically it's still telling us to stay with the trade, okay? And in fact, right there, we've got what we call a rule of one short. Now, when you come down here and you get this bounce, look over here. When you bounce on the EMA, see how you're bouncing on the 34, you're bouncing on the 89, you're bouncing on the 200. What do we call that? That's called a 2B. So a 2B is a very high probability trade. Now, it is after we don't, it's pretty poor divergence, that is a 2BD can sort of be a lower probability. Now in entering this, where's the logical bounce point? So if we were to take this for a scalp, and you can see you've got a pivot just above you, get ready to exit or pull your stops up nice and tight, okay? So it doesn't matter how good your trade entry is or it looks good, if you've got some major support resistance areas in front of you, such as major moving, at moving averages or, may, or, or floor pivots, get ready to pull your stops right up or even take profits. Now, if we look at that there, if we used 
the super scalper there and a buy stop you would be in here that only rallied up five ticks it rallied up six ticks in total okay now I would have been out at five ticks now look over there and the way I look at it I can always re-enter the trade see this good downtrend I've got right now it is in conflict with my highest time frame uh, and that's where as a newer trader you might choose to just use um, uh, the one time frame now notice here we've got some support here but once again in taking this particular trade here we've got another four or five six ticks here what if you had have taken that bounce right there well at that time see this here it was back in a direction but notice here you've got two big green candles on your anchor chart now at that time there okay it's and you if you consider taking that um, you're all green now this takes a bit of getting used to but you're going to be watching the candles on your anchor charts back to the PowerPoint okay so there there are the rules now back here what about the ATR versus the 8 by 8 the little blue lines there and the red sorry the, the blue dots uh, and the uh, red dots that is the ATR indicator I have it's very close uh, and if you want it to give you more flexibility rather than have it set to a setting of 1.35 or 1.75 you might try to have it as a setting of two or wider so I, I think because the the standard setting the 8 by 8 has a slight edge I think over the ATR but if you like the ATR um, you can do exactly the same thing if you're used to using the ATR what we want to do of course in the end traders is have our have our charts as clean as possible that just showed me there that the ATR with a setting of 1.35 would have shaken me out of the of those trades what is a wider ATR setting may have kept me in okay uh, that particular one there there we've got uh, the ATR again you can see here the ATR can do the similar sort of thing or once again other indicators will do a similar thing as well uh, now one thing I did want to bring up is that um, uh, Trevor one of our members he loves using the percent R to get the hooks with the 8 by 8 um, now in this particular case here I oh, sorry he's using it with the ATR my apologies and you can see you can use a three period RSI will get your little rule of ones and your hooks there see that there or you can use the percent R uh, coaching members in the room if you like I haven't brought this up for a long time if you want me to cover that in coaching just let me know I can cover that but prior, pure price action traders what it really is is just giving you the rule of one entries okay you, you've been on the first turn I've actually offset these here but on the first turn, it's simply a rule of one entry so our pure price action traders your rule of ones pick up all of those moves now waiting for the candle to close on your anchor chart one so if we look here so if we choose to take this reversal here this counter trend move we may choose to rather than uh, just enter on the third candle here or even here we may choose to wait for the candle to close some added insurance okay so in that particular case here in this case is actually a full nine ticks it'll vary with every market or every time frame that you're trading so there I count down seven ticks from the high and there is my entry normally if I wanted a sell stop I would be counting four ticks down from that high uh, the percent R uh, uh, Robert is um, at eight an eight period percent R okay and the RSI is set to three okay so that's an eight and a three and they give you as you can see they're basically exactly the same turn so you only need one of them of course um, so Mary Jean are all 
uh, entry chart 30 for Brit taken with the rule of one? Uh, good question. So Mary Jean just asked, do we take all 34 Bs with the rule of one? The answer is, is no. Uh, and here's why. See that there, traders. Um, that's almost a 34 bead of a short, okay? Almost, it's closer to a 21. It's only a tick, tick away. It's coming down. Now, in this particular case, we could enter that as a rule of one on the first reversal candle. Why? We've got a really nice trending 34. Over here, look, it's starting a trend up. If ever you see the 34 EMA starts to level out, I then want to wait for three higher closes of a super scalper. So if ever, well there it's still going up, but if ever you have the 34 EMA sideways, wait for the super scalper. Okay, we want to just have that confirm a trade. Now here, you can enter there, no problem. Even with that one, no problem. Uh, and even this, this um, 21B, uh, sorry, 21 EMA bounce there. Why? Because they're trending. If ever we start to go sideways, we want to really then have that added confirmation um, uh, of three higher closes. All right, this is just a couple of repeats. There, most of these you can uh, read. I'll just see if there's anything interesting. Uh, okay, so placing, can you still hear me by the way? I just kick my lead. I'm still coming through. Just want to make sure, can someone just say yes, that you can still hear me? Yes, good, okay, thanks, Laurie. I, uh, with my knee, knee, I really pulled out the socket again. All right, so, so just here, placing, so this is with a, uh, a one tick, so for a rule of one sell stop, you count down two ticks from the high of that candle. So over here, so if I want to enter on the first candle as a rule of one, but I want to use a buy stop. See that red candle there? I count two ticks from the low. But as soon, see over here traders, as soon as I, if I wanted to enter on a rule of one, as soon as I start to get these uh, candles coming down, I want to start to um, just drag it down. Now, right there, if we had have used the rule of one uh, entry there, see how that tail just there popped up. See that just there? The tar would have stopped you in to that trade and stopped you out immediately. Then you had another rule of one or the super scalper down there. Now, see you had great momentum, but notice here it's starting to turn. Here you've got great momentum. Now, over here, same thing. I want to enter that trade there as a rule of one. From the high of the last green candle, I count down two. Now, with a super scalper, and this is a one tick entry, I count four ticks from the low of that last red candle. And that's where I get filled. For a sell, I count four ticks down from the high of that candle. Um, just quickly, look, you can use some, uh, like right there I've got the squeeze, uh, the TTM squeeze, and there, this is available virtually on every platform. Uh, the squeeze can be a nice indicator just for double confirming divergence. I don't generally have it up. Once again, it's something else on the charts, but it, it's just an, another indicator. Now, up here, we, uh, we take this entry, we're on the way down, we hit some consolidation, so we decide to get out. Right, we decide to, okay, that's a nice 10 tick move, that's $50, I might jump out. When you see on your anchor charts, you get the tails with Renko, that's what you usually see. So when you see you get a tail and it closes down, you can trade the tails. What makes this even better is I've got divergence with the trend. Traders, that's almost what we call a bet the farm trade. Okay, see how we've got, it's, it's not a double top, but we've got a higher high and we've got a lower high on the squeeze and on the uh, MACD. Um, does the squeeze give me any real, look, not, probably not. 
okay sometimes I just like to fiddle around with indicators okay um, and I just just a double confirmation uh, here very important thing here is notice the strength of the trends of the anchor chart the AC the anchor chart trends when we see we've got these what I'm looking for see that there that's a 21b on my um, uh, on the anchor chart one when I've got a 21b even without and see how then it turns into an 8 by 8 that's when I want to go for a home run see that one just there that is that right there okay so my stop is one tick below and bang I get that a big rally up now what has the most influence on your trading the anchor chart trends because the lower the time frame the more chop you'll have okay uh, here you can also do the same thing and use on tick charts but just be aware like this is a snapback when you see price drop like this and this is what we call a t3 where price is gapping away from the 8 EMA you don't have to wait for then the crossover okay that's a good signal to get out on your reversal candles a couple of higher highs so that once again flexibility in all things but what you want to be doing here traders and this is the whole concept of the 8x8 eight eight, is to be picking these up see here down here on the 8 see down here I had an 8x8 eight eight cross right there okay and that move all the way up now that's 15 ticks on the Aussie dollar that's conservatively getting out there on the cross that's a full 15 ticks which is $75 okay so that's a good two to one three to one risk reward there and you can see there we chopped all over the place now why did I say you could have entered here well what you may have waited for was and that there is a t20-1 see the black dot the black dot represents the eight crossing through the 34 EMA so that's generally a nice indication of a change in trend price then retraced it turned into a 34 B which is just an added confirmation if you want to do that to go for a larger target uh, here we've got it again okay so down here notice this and this is where you've got to get used to really trading both the two B's and the eight by well you don't have to but I'd recommend you do because down here you've got your typical t12 or 89 bounce in the direction of the trend okay so first of all what's the trend biased on your anchor charts we can see quite obviously we're in an uptrend on look at the 200 look at the 89 look at the, the 89 look at the 200 we've got a solid uptrend so just there price comes down we bounce on the 89 and we get a 2b just there thank you very much now you could have actually stayed in that if you wanted to ride that all the way up but if you decided to get out there is your second entry which is also a 2b why you get that pullback that is a 34b and you're bouncing off the 89 and your tail has touched the 21 remember for a 2b we must touch touch sorry the 21 EMA as a minimum uh, once again note the strength of a trend just here uh, that one is that one in I think it's a different slide yeah it is so there you've got go for a runner go for a runner go for a runner uh, that's a double up that shouldn't be there okay and let's just have a look at um, one more here okay now on faster charts now this is one where it's two tick and four tick um, I recommend with the eight by eight if you're going to scalp is and by the way you can still do exactly this the two and the four is to consider um, uh, going for a one to four but really it can be perhaps splitting hairs a little bit so let's now uh, go to the live charts and that should say it should be say 100 not 400 tell them fibs there okay so let's get back 
to the live chat. So let me pull that up and let's have a look at a couple of things there. So we're just getting set up right now, just there. So let's explore this uh, short signal that we've got just here. Note here how the, let's just analyze first of all, the fanning of the EMAs. See how the, the 34 EMA has crossed under the 89. Okay, just there. See how the eight is under the 21. Now, added insurance there, yes, you might have chosen to try to maybe enter that as a rule of one or as a slingshot or a short-term stochastic hook. This is a lower probability area. Why? You've got support on the 89. You've got support on the 200. Now, fortunately, we have come down and tested it twice. Okay, and if I look over here, I do have... And once again, I'd be expanding. Perhaps I won't do it now, but I'd be looking at what's the trend bias at this stage. So let me mark that up. Well, actually, if I'm going to say to you, I would have taken that. Let me just check this. Okay. This is what I'd call a 70% a 70 trade. Okay. Call this a 70%. Uh, okay. Now, if you look at this here, for the coaching members in the room, you've got a double bottom lots of angulation, this could easily turn into an ABC to the long side. However, on this very small time frame, I'm looking at the scalping. If I can pick up five to six ticks, I would be happy. Now, if I entered this, where would my stop be? One tick above. So I would have a six tick stop. Now we break this little low and I expect we'll have a really nice little lump collapse in the market here. But let's now look at the ES and see what's happening there. So on the ES, okay, this is the open of the Globex session uh, way back here. Um, now, this is pretty choppy stuff. Look at this here, okay? Now, do we have a fanning of the EMAs? Look, just there, you're starting to get potentially a fanning. Okay, so uh, Laurie, that's the um, uh, that's the little indicator. Um, and actually, let me just show you this. Look, Laurie, you're on TradeStation, aren't you? Okay, uh, just make sure we're talking about the same. Yeah, the sign. Okay, so uh, traders uh, for TradeStation users in the um, uh, and actually, in the TradeStation indicator folders on my Google Drive, um, I've actually got the indicator for this. Uh, and what you can do, it's the... Uh, so we'll just go back to the right one here. That one and that one, that's that's the, um, the eight crossing the eight, the yellow and the cyan. That's the eight crossing the simple moving averages, just there. Okay, uh, and now it's not called raise indicator. It's, it's so look for that. Okay, um, I should have got my program that you, you fluffed up, and I haven't gone back to him yet to get it changed. So when you're looking for it, if you upload this, that's what it reads. Now, if you're then going to set it up on Ninja Trader, um, uh, so Ali was kind enough to send through instructions on how to set it up on the MA Cross Builder. So in the folder, you've got the um, uh, the instructions on how to set that up, okay? So that's in the folder. And I would have been stopped on that trade by, on the uh, little one there on the Aussie dollar, by the way. It just rallied up very, very quickly. Just there, you can see it just there. I would have been stopped on that. Now, once again, look at this. Do we have a fanning of the EMAs? No, we're sideways at the moment, but back to the ES. So let's look at this here. So you had a nice little trade here. Okay, so there it's certainly looking like I'm starting to get a fanning of the EMAs. See that just there? You've got a 21B just here. I've got, if I was over here, okay, I've got it here. And the crosses, if you're wondering what they are, that's normally I have it as a dot, but the black dots are simply ruler ones. 
what I might even do just to save confusion, let me perhaps turn those off for a minute. Let me turn off the T20s and let me turn off the rule of ones. The rule of one, remember traders, is simply just the first candle that closes back in the trade direction. Now, just here, we were trading this live, we'd see this. My long-term stochastic is starting to uh, rise just there. Okay, let me just um, quickly, I'm just gonna have a sip of my tea, just one moment, please. Okay, we've now got, uh, just there, see how my eight by eight is crossed? I've got what I call a rule of one entry. Now, with a rule of one entry, uh, let's remember that my uh, total stop is only four ticks. Now, on the ES, that's $50. Now, if I enter as a, uh, a T1, I've got a six tick stop, which is $75. So, the quicker I can get into a trade, the smaller the stop, the easier it is to hit my target. Now, when we're trading this, if we were trading this, where's our target? Number one, we'd be looking at our pivots, but we also consider where is the last swing high, which is just there. So that would be my initial target. Now, in using a buy stop above here, I would be entering now. Okay, so I'd be in here and I've got a four tick stop. One, two, the tail, three, and one tick below. Now, I'd be after a minimum, I'd, be, I'd really be after a minimum of four ticks, preferably six. Okay, but I, there's no way known on the scalping chart, I'm gonna give back $50. Okay, so we're in one, two, three, four, we've hit five. I'll be certainly going up and we've actually touched six ticks at that stage. Okay, so now we'd be waiting for a pullback retracement and I already know what happens, but I'm gonna just um, tell you there, I would have potentially taken this rule of one just here and I would have been stopped on that particular trade, okay? Why would have I considered taking that? Because at the time, I've got a fanning starting to happen here. I've got a fan, looking like a fanning over here, okay, on all three time frames. Let me just check one thing I always do though. Yes, so I would have probably taken that particular as a long and I would have been stopped on that particular trade. So now, what am I looking at doing? Now I've got a little double top just there. Uh, no divert, so I wouldn't take that. Okay, now I've got what we call a 200 EMA overshoot now. So we've now come down on the short term and I'm pulling up. I do have a rule of one, but uh, I'll wait for a pullback to the 200. I'm gonna wait for a super scalper. Now, if ever you're on short traders, and now see how we're pulling right back to the 34, I'm gonna change my mind. I'll enter that as a rule of one. See how the 34 EMA is trending nicely now? The 21 is under it. Uh, and this is something you'll see in the notes. So let me explain this. You'll see there that I've got the notes that says, when you have a counter trend super scalper, which is what I'd classify that one as at this stage, wait for a with trend super scalper to reconfirm your entry, unless it's a 34B. So if ever you get a counter trend move or a code like that, um, uh, wait for the super scalper to plop back in, uh, unless, now that's a 34B, I will take that. Now, what else is that trade? So right there, it's also on the next one actually. So on the next candle there, it would have been a slingshot as well but I'll enter it as a rule of one because if I use the sell stop and I put my stop one tick above, I've only got a four tick stop. So I want a minimum of one to one. So I wanna get at least four ticks, preferably six ticks. Okay, so whoops, went back and tested my stop and here is actually the super scalper now, but we're still in it. Uh, one, two, three, I'm still in it actually. 
now I've got my forts come down and touched five ticks. So now I'll be looking for a re-entry. Note up here now, I'm starting to get the eight by eight and I should point this out for the larger targets. Where that line is marked, I now have just the eight by eight trading conditions. See how the, uh, they're now crossing over. What I recommend you do is when you get that, mark it up on your charts and simply go eight by eight short. What that tells me is that on the anchor chart, I now have short trading conditions. Now I wouldn't enter on that crossover. What I'm gonna do is wait for a legitimate entry on my entry chart. And I've got a rule of one or I've got the T1. It gives me legitimate trade entry. So I'm not gonna just jump in there uh, on the entry because you know, we, it's like a T20. Quite often you can be well out of the moving averages. So if I was in there and see this here, and this is where I would be wanting, if you were say writing, what am I expecting now at the 89 EMA traders? The, the 89 and 200 are what we call price magnets. Okay, so I'm expecting a bounce on the anchor chart one at the 89. And let's just see what happens. So you had either there, there, another legitimate entry there, you had one here and you've got one there. So either way, there was 50, there was another 50, there's another 50. Okay, so there you would have been up 150 if you were scalping. If you're in the trade, if you're still sitting with the runner, you'd still be in it. And this is where exceptions to the rule. So we'll see what happens at this 89. Now look below, what's down below here? What we've got here traders is the floor pivot down here. So what we usually do is we usually stair step on the way down. So what that means is we might get a bounce, then rally up, then head on down. So we'll just see what happens here. We may come all the way down straight away. So if you're riding this trade, okay, you're, you're up, what are you up now? 150, I don't know. So let's just see. Okay, so our target ultimately is going to be the floor pivot. Now, over on your anchor chart two, there is some other support there as well for 34. So we'll see what happens there as well. Okay, so this is what we call a fanning of the EMA and you've got your eight by eight support just there. Now, let's just say traders that if you had have taken profits and you were looking for a re-entry, you had one right there. You actually had two potential re-entry points. You had one right there on that rule of one or on the second candle on the hook. And that's uh, it's what we call a slingshot or a short term stochastic hook right there. Now remember my stop is only four ticks and I've touched down, I've come down and hit five ticks. Here's a bit of support here. We'll see if we get that bounce up there. Uh, and once again, let's just have a look at our anchor chart. Okay, we've been in a strong uptrend since midnight last night. So we may get a substantial move back to the long side off that 34. Because if you look here, notice how on the highest on this anchor chart here, we don't have any real divergence there. So it'd be interesting to see what happens here. But that's the beauty of scalping. We're taking uh, a slingshot. No, a slingshot is a T2. A, a, a T10 is right here. So a T10 is where you have the long-term stochastic overbought comes down, you get that hook and I've got that little lower high just there. Now, what about this here? Look, just see, you've got a little bit of divergence there. That is what we call, but it's not so much the little bit of divergence there, but this is what we call a T12. You remember the T12, where do I say we usually bounce? off the 89 or the 200. So we'll just see what, um, what happens there. 
Now let me just go to another market in the meantime. We'll come back to that. So what we've got here is the one tick CL just here. So if we look at what's been happening since the market open, now the market opens Eastern Standard Time at 1800. So on the one tick CL, and remember it's uh, $10 per tick. Okay, you've got, uh, now let's just be realistic on our entries. You had one there, you had one there, you had one of well, that, whoops, just there. Using your ruler ones, and these are all short-term stochastic hooks as well. That would have got you in there, or even that one there. Let's pull this off. Now, what about this one here? Well, traders, what we'd be looking at, let me just do this here, is there is no way known we would take this one. Why? Look over at your anchor chart two. What have I got right there? Okay, and even to a degree a little bit there, and that formed a double top and see, well, that's actually after that one, but see how I've got divergence there. So I perhaps um, I wouldn't have even taken this 34B at this stage. It's Look, it's probably a 70% trade, but also notice I've got the pivot up above. And yes, it is a 34B right now. It's just I've got this divergence over here. So I'd probably just wait and see what happened there. All right, but you've just had a nice little trade there. That one you'd probably still be in. That one there, or you would have ridden that one up, but look at this here. Notice you're still, oh, there's your slight crossover just up there. Let's look also look at the EC at the euro dollar. Now remember, we are during the Globex session now, right? So it's very, very choppy. Now see this here, this is very messy. Do I have a fanning of the EMAs? Not here, I don't, and not here and barely here. Let's just scroll back a little bit, just go back earlier in the day, and let's look here. Now, this is what we call where you're going for your home runs. Remember, we mentioned that when we have an 89B or a C to C, right there, you had an 89.34 ruler one. Look at that move. Up here, just there, you had a rule of one against the 89. Look at that move. Right there, now you actually had one right there that I would have been stopped on just there. We then had another one just there. And as much as then it turned, there's still some good ticks in that one. We then had another short on that rule of one just there. So let me just have a look. We're coming to an end. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look here at some of the notes I've got here. All right, so just a couple of the handouts. Uh, raise thoughts and key considerations. Trade the trend following strategy using, using the entry chart in the direction of the anchor chart, eight by eight. Okay, so what we're really looking for to do there is we're looking for the high, look those pullbacks and trading. We're surfing the wave, traders. Be cautious when price action on on and the trade entry on the entry chart is moved away from the 21 EMA. What I mean by that, the further away from the 21 EMA your uh, entry is on your entry chart, quite often it then will lead to a, a pullback to either the 21 or the 34. So be careful of ruler ones when you're well out. Likewise, when you're getting a lot of angulation, you want to be careful. So on the entry charts, do I have a T1? Your slingshot, short term, stochastic hooks, your ruler one will usually set up first because a T1 is reliant on what? Three higher closes. Okay, so generally speaking, um, uh, you'll have these other setups uh, first of all. Um, Let's see, two Bs, uh, you want to take those even if you don't have the eight by eight. That is, if you've got a two B, you've got good trending EMAs on your anchor chart or on both anchor charts and on your entry chart, we want to take those. They're your home runs. Uh, I've mentioned that um, on very deep pullbacks, 
uh, consider waiting for the anchor chart one candle to close in the trend direction. So I think, look, just about all of those, whoops, using a bit of a typo there, trade the uh, using, um, so I think uh, most of those look on scalping. Traders, I think I've covered just about um, everything. And look, there's just a lot of handouts there for you. Whoops. Let me just do this here. And just pull a couple of things here. So on the tick values, if you're after your 10 ticks, you only need uh, two or three of those and some scalps a day, and you can do very, very well. Uh, what else is there? Look, there's lots of tips and handouts. There's, there's around 10, 15 handouts there, traders. Uh, that you can uh, have a look at there. So finally, if you want to really master all of these, uh, come and join our coaching class. For only $97 a month, you can finish up after your first month, but for $97 a month um, uh, or $5.97 a year, you can get all of this, two hours, four hours a week, I cover all of this traders. And the links to join my coaching are in the handouts folders. The handouts folders, uh, uh, for existing coaching members, when you log in to February session, you can see there that um, there's a separate folder I've set up. For general members, log into my Google Drive, and there's a folder I've set up there called, uh, where is it? 8x8 Masterclass. Okay, so in the 8x8 Masterclass, in the general members area, you'll find it there. Now, I'll also be posting the link to this recording in that folder, as well as in the coaching members folder as well. So traders, thank you very much. Everyone have a, uh, a great weekend. And uh, for my coaching members, I'll see you all next week. And for all other members, good trading. Thank you.